Hello there, Mel Nation. Welcome to Dapp Central, your home for everything blockchain and crypto. My name is Fareed. Today, we're jumping into all of the latest news and highlights going on with the Melt protocol building the Web3 banking stack. So if you guys are not familiar with Melt, I'm not going to dive too deep into that today. Please check out my entire playlist over, I think, 40 to 50 videos now keeping track with everything that Melt has developed and deployed. My latest video was surrounding the review of the Melt app or their mobile application, which now gives you the ability to actually open up your own wallet, manage your own crypto assets, not only on Cardano, but also on Avalanche with support for BNB and Bitcoin on the way. And I also talk about the KYC process with respect to their Neobank. So for today's video, what I want to do is just quickly dive into three partnerships that the Mel team has just recently um, launched or created. And then I want to jump into some updates surrounding staking. I've been receiving more and more question or more and more questions surrounding staking and how the community can actually go ahead and take advantage of this brand new staking feature for Meld, right, on their Meld L1, which was launched at around the late portion of December. As always, if you guys do enjoy updates like these, I would appreciate you if you could smash that thumbs up. If you want more content like this surrounding Meld, consider subscribing. And last but not least, if you have any questions surrounding anything I'm talking about today, then please make sure to go ahead and leave a comment down below. Jumping into the very first piece here for today's video, I want to highlight the recent partnership between Meld and Covalent. So Covalent is a blockchain API platform that aims to simplify building and deploying on the Meld L1. So if you're looking to build your own dApp, which Meld has announced a partnership with Azomi to build a DEX, they've also collaborated or partnered up with actual community members who are aiming to build their own decentralized apps on the Meld L1, as well as an, expect an expectation, excuse me, of a brand new NFT marketplace on the platform. So as more and more protocols begin to build on the Meld L1, in order to simplify that process, they can use something like Covalent. Jumping over to the official Covalent website, they do advertise what they call their Gold Rush Kit, which is basically a quick API or an endpoint that allows you to grab data from a particular blockchain. Scrolling down here, it highlights the fact that they are providing a friendly user blockchain API, and they're basically aiming to provide speed as well as scalability. Last but not least, they boast standardized human readable transactions, which if you guys have been in the blockchain space, you definitely know that those can be very difficult to read at times. That's also going to just kind of segue into a recent update that we just saw with Meld as well, which was the release of Meld Scan. So Meld Scan is going to be their own blockchain explorer on the Meld L1, which allows for you to take a look at the rolling epochs, the transactions, the tokens that have been created, and just the overall growth from a chart perspective or from a more visual perspective, just to kind of gauge how everything is going on in the Meld ecosystem. The second partnership is one that was struck with Umbrella Network. So Umbrella is going to be a decentralized layer to Oracle offering scalable and custom data feeds. Now, this is the second Oracle integration that we've seen with Melt, with the first one being with Supra Oracle. So I'm going to jump into Supra here in just a minute. But if I jump over to the official Umbrella website, it states here data done better. So their goal is very similar to something like we have on C3 or Charlie 3 in Cardano, where their job is to take data that's off chain and bring that on chain in a decentralized and secure manner. Now, the fact that we have two of these data providers or two of these Oracle platforms operating on the Meld L1 just means more redundancy and more of a reassurance, right, that the data is in fact good or coming from a a good place. Also, in the event that one of these Oracle platforms goes down, you do have a, set, a secondary platform to kind of rely on. So if you guys want to find out more about Umbrella, you can head over to umb.network. But this again breaks down how their architecture is structured and exactly what you can expect by integrating their Oracle solution into a particular blockchain in this particular event, the Meld subnet. Jumping over into the second Oracle, which I want to quickly touch on, and I did actually highlight 
Supra in a prior video, um, but their official website is Supra.com. They actually have a much bigger presence within the blockchain space. As you guys can see here, they provide different data feeds, including BTC slash USD, ETH slash USDT, BNB slash USD, C, and a few others. What I really like about here is just their transparency. So we can see that a lot of these were actually just updated a couple of seconds ago. So that's also another, another thing to keep in mind, right, is how often these data feeds are actually refreshed. One thing to also keep in mind is the actual cost that it takes to bring this data from off-chain to on-chain. At the end of the day, these platforms are for profit. So whatever service they're providing to the meld network will actually be costing the meld team here at the very bottom with respect to supra we've got the full list of integrations and partners that will do it here for the second update the third and final update that i want to jump into before i talk a little bit more about staking specifically is the five stake pools that the gogo pool team will be launching in partnership with meld so as it stands right now, I believe we've just crossed over, I want to say 20 or so stake pools. If not, we are very close to passing that up over the next couple of days. But what we've now seen is with more demand with staking is more demand for nodes. So now that we have uh, staking available, not only Cardano native staking, but also Meld L1 staking, we now have five new pools being brought on by Gogo Pools. Gogo Pools is a platform that provides liquid staking services as well as Avalanche subnet infrastructure, infrastructure services for any Avalanche based subnet. So because Meld is an Avalanche based subnet, they're able to take advantage of Google Pools, which has now vouched to open up five separate stake pools in support of the Meld protocol. Jumping over into this next page here, if you guys want to find out more about Google Pool, I'll go ahead and leave the link to their official Twitter and website down below. But as I mentioned, their goal is to provide liquid staking services as well as the ability to create what they call mini pools. That will do it there for those three partnerships with Meld. Next, I want to focus more or less on staking now. So if I jump over to the official Meld staking Twitter page, which again, I'll go and leave the link to that down below. That particular Twitter page focuses solely on providing updates with respect to staking. So anytime that there's a, an upgrade for staking or anytime that there's a brand new pool, this will be the very first place that that update is posted on. Now, you can also head over to the official Meld Nodes page, which is available at nodes.melt.com. As it stands here, just to confirm my earlier comment, we do have a total of 25 pools online. And right now we are in epoch number three. In terms of the total amount of meld locked, we are now at a half of a billion meld tokens locked up or 500 million meld tokens locked. Jumping back over here into the staking update, we have a upgrade that was released on Sunday, February 4th, which improved the following with respect to staking. Number one, it increased the composability or interoperability of the staking NFTs. If you guys aren't aware, Meld staking provides two options. One is a locked staking period, and the second is a liquid staking period. If you go ahead and lock up your staking or your, your meld assets, you receive an NFT, which allows for you to basically trade that on a secondary marketplace if you'd like to. Um, but that is basically your ticket to redeem your meld uh, staked assets once they are complete or once the staking period has been met. Next, we have optimized node operator rewards, followed by support for flash loans. So Mel does appear to be working on a couple of things behind the scenes. We did get some announcements surrounding some secret products. Could the flash loans be one of them? I definitely think so, um, especially with the rise in utilization of flash loans on EVM based networks. Now, the next page here basically highlights the fact that in order to take advantage of the staking upgrade, all you need to do is go, is go ahead and visit the staking page within your Meld wallet. When you do that, you'll be able to upgrade your NFTs. Again, I only think that this applies if you are um, staking for a lock period. I could be wrong there. But anyway, once you access that staking page, you're able to go ahead and upgrade your NFTs or upgrade your staking feature. So one reminder here, it states that unclaimed rewards will be claimed when you update. So if you've been staking for the past couple of epochs, if you haven't claimed any rewards, when you do up upgrade your NFTs, your um, assets or your 
staked melt rewards will be claimed. Jumping over, I want to highlight the fact that we are now expecting two more pools from the time that I'm going to be releasing this video. So I mentioned the fact that Google pools had partnered up with Melt. We've already seen the launch of three out of five stake pools. One launched on February 8th. One did just launch on Monday on the 12th of February at 9 p.m. CET, which is also equivalent to about 8 a.m. UTC. We just got a stake pool that launched earlier today, which actually filled up in more than, or no more than I should say one minute, which took place on Tuesday, February 13th at 1 p.m. CET or 12 p.m. UTC. Now, one thing that I'm noticing is that the time at which these stake pools are launching does appear to be at different times of the day, potentially aiming to allow more people to stake within different time zones. Obviously, crypto and blockchain is not time zone restricted. You know, we've got people in the United States, Switzerland, Europe, Africa, Asia, Australia. And I think that the Melt team wants to make this as simple as possible and give everybody a fair opportunity to jump into their staking pools. So if you're watching this before Wednesday, February 14th or Valentine's Day at 5 p.m. CET or at 4 p.m. UTC, Meld will be releasing another stake pool. Given how popular the other stake pool launches have been, I don't anticipate this being open for more than four to five minutes at most. Um, if it's not already filled within the first minute. So as a quick reminder, you want to make sure to go ahead and bridge your melt if it's on Cardano over to the melt L1. And that is done through the actual melt app. They've got a bridging option directly built within their wallet. And I have a full dedicated video walking through that entire process. So please make sure to check that out and make sure to go ahead and bridge your melt. That way you don't have to try to bridge as soon as the pool goes live, therefore slowing you down again, because if any, everybody else has their melt already bridged, they'll be able to quickly go ahead and stake those assets. So the very last pool will be kicking off on Thursday, February 15th at 10 p.m. CET or at 9 p.m. UTC. Again, the competition will definitely be stiff. Very lastly, I want to highlight some of the latest pools that I've launched. So we've got a new node or new pool, which is Lemon, which had a pledge of 2 million with a fee of 10%. One thing to keep in mind about the actual pledges themselves is depending on the amount of pledge put up by the stake pool operator, that will dictate whether or not the um, additional melt that is staked from outsiders has the ability to get slashed or not. But at the point that they put down 2 million melt, for example, like the lemon node operator did, there is no longer any risk for slashing for delegators that come in and stake on top of that. So the reason why the Melt team has done this is to make it more um, of an incentivization, number one, for the operator to put up a bigger pledge, but the number two to benefit, right, and remove staking slashing um, risks from delegators, therefore pushing them to actually delegate to pools with a higher pledge. Again, this is one of the reasons why I'm so bullish on Melt. Obviously, I'm also an ambassador. I want to put that out there and be very clear about that. But the fact that they've taken the time to think about how to incentivize things properly, including gas fees and block rewards, which I've highlighted in separate videos. So I wanted to touch on that and just the importance of the actual pledge associated with the stake pool that you may be delegating to as a Melt delegator or as more pools open up. Jumping back in, we have the Triple W pool, which has also opened up with a pledge of 2 million meld and a fee of 10%. And then the most recent one that just went live and literally was filled within a minute or so, right? Um, probably even more closer to 30 seconds is the Mink pool. So this is the third pool coming in from Google Pools, again, with a 2 million meld pledge and a fee of 10%. Again, as a quick reminder, please make sure to go ahead and check out the official Melt note staking page. Also, make sure to go ahead and subscribe or follow the official Melt staking page in order to stay updated. I think that'll do it here for today's video. Again, just want to quickly touch on the three recent partnerships, which include a partnership with Covalent, um, utilizing their blockchain API, Umbrella, the decentralized layer two Oracle platform, 
followed by a partnership with Google Pools to grow their node operations. That said, if you guys enjoyed today's video updates on staking and just surrounding Melt in general, please make sure to smash that thumbs up. It really does make a difference here. If you are new to the channel and you want more content like this surrounding all the builders in the crypto space, consider subscribing to Dapp Central. And last but not least, if you have any questions for me surrounding anything we've chatted about, then please make sure to go ahead and leave a comment down below. That said, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.